canaries, said Parahandi contemptuously. I have a canary yonder at home that would give you a sore heat to hear him singing. Ah, he's just sublime. I have an old doogie. It was the first time the mate had ever heard of the captain as a bird fancier, but he was a loyal friend, and at Parahandy's wink he said promptly, "'Oh, you have that, Peter, one of the finest ever stepped, many a sore he'd the had wi' it.' "'What kind of canary is it?' asked the broadic man jealously. "'Is it a Norwich?' Parahandy put up his hand, as usual, to scratch his ear and check the act halfway. "'No, nor a sandwich.' "'It's just a plain yellow one,' he said coolly. "'I'll wager you a pound it could sing the best you have, Blin. "'It whistles even on night and day, "'till I have to put it under a bowl of water "'if I'm wanting my night's sleep.' "'The competitive passions of the Brodick man were roused. "'He considered that among his dozen prize canaries "'he had at least one that could beat anything likely "'to be in the possession of the captain of the vital spark, "'which was lying at Brodick when this conversation took place. "'He produced it, an emaciated, sickle-shaped, "'small-headed, bead-eyed, business-looking bird, "'which he called the Wee Free. "'He was prepared to put up the pound for a singing contest "'anywhere in Arran, date hereafter to be arranged. Oh, "'It's all right,' said Parahandy. "'I'll take you on. "'We'll be doing this way for a cargo of gravel uh, in a week, "'and if the monies were the man in the shipping box at the quay, "'my canary will lift it.' Uh, "'But what about your pound?' asked the Brodick man. "'You must wager a pound, too.' "'Oh, is that the way of it?' said the captain. "'I was never up to the gambling, but I'll risk the pound.' "'And so the contest was arranged. "'But you have not a canary at all, have you?' said Doogie, "'later in the day, as the vital spark was puffing on her deliberate way to Glasgow. "'Me?' said Parahandy. Oh, "'I would as soon think of keeping a hoolet. "'But, ach, there's plenty in Glasgow if you have the money. "'From the needle to the anchor.' "'For by a kind of gentleman that breeds canaries, he's a riveter, "'and if I was getting him in a good trim, he would maybe give me a lena one. "'If no, we'll take a donder up to the bird market "'and pick up a smart one that'll put the hems on Sandy Care's wee free. "'No man with any religion about him would call his canary a wee free.' "'The captain and the mate of the Vital Spark left their noble ship at the wharf that evening, it was a Saturday, and went in quest of the gentleman who bred canaries. He was discovered in the midst of an altercation with his wife, which involved the total destruction of all the dishes on the kitchen dresser, and, with a shrewdness and consideration that were never absent in the captain, he apologised for the untimely intrusion and prepared to go away. "'I see you're busy,' he said, looking in on the floor covered with the debris of the delft which this ardent lover of bird life was smashing in order to impress his wife with the fact that he was really annoyed about something. Oh, I see you're busy. Fine man, fine. A wife need never weary in this house. It's that cheery. Uh, Doogie and me was just wanting a wee lend to a canary for a day or two, but ach, it doesn't matter, seeing you're so throng. We'll just try the shops." It was indicative of the fine, kindly humanity of the riveter who loved canaries that this one unhesitatingly stopped his labours, having disposed of the last plate, and said, oh, "'I couldn't have it, chaps. I wouldn't have trust a canary out of the house. There's no saying the ill usage it might get. It would break my heart to hear anything gang rang wi' ony of my birds.' "'Just that, well, just that,' said Parahandy agreeably. "'Your feelings does your credit.' "'I would be awful vexed if you broke your heart. "'It'll soon be the only hell thing left in the house. "'If I was you and had such a spite in the delf, "'I would use dynamite.' "'And Doogie and he departed. "'That's the sort of thing that keeps me from getting merit,' "'the captain with a sigh confided to his mate "'when they got down the stair. "'Look at the money it costs for dishes every Saturday night.' "'Oh, them riveters is awful chaps for sport,' said Doogie, irrelevantly. 
"'There's nothing for it now but the bird market,' said the captain, leading the way east along Argyle Street. They had no clear idea where that institution was, but at the corner of Jamaica Street consulted several Celtic compatriots who put them on the right track. Having reached the bird market, the captain explained his wants to a party who had guaranteed A1 songsters to sell at two shillings. This person was particularly enthusiastic about one bird, which in the meantime was as silent as the harp that once threw Tara's halls. He gave them his solemn assurance it was a genuine prize roller canary, that when it started whistling, as it generally did at breakfast time, it sang till the gas was lit, with not even a pause for refreshment. For that reason, it was an economical canary to keep. It practically cost nothing for seed for this canary. If it was a songster suitable for use on a ship that was wanted, he went on, with a rapid assumption that his customers were of a maritime profession, this bird was peculiarly adapted for the post. It was a genuine imported bird, and had already made a sea voyage. To sell a bird of such exquisite parts for two shillings was sheer commercial suicide, he admitted it, but he was anxious that it should have a good home. Oh, "'I wish I could hear it whistling,' said the captain, peering through the spars at the very dejected bird, which was a molting hen. "'Oh, it never stings after the gas is lighted,' said the vendor regretfully. "'That's the only thing that's wrong with it. If that bird would sing at night when the gas was lit, it would solve the problem of perpetual motion.' Para Handy, considerably impressed by this high warrantice, bought the canary— which was removed from the cage and placed in a brown paper sugar bag, ventilated by holes which the bird seller made in it with a stub of a lead pencil. "'Will you no need a cage?' asked Doogie. "'Oh, not at all, not at all,' the captain protested. "'Once we get in Duntabrodic, we'll get plenty of cages.' And away they went with their purchase. Parahandy, elated at the imminent prospect of his prize, Canary winning an easy pound. Doogie carefully carried the bag containing the birds. Some days after, the vital spark arrived at Brodick, but the captain, who had not yet staked his pound with the man in the shipping box as agreed on, curiously enough showed no disposition to bring off the challenge meeting between the birds. It was by accident he met the Brodick man one day on the quay. "'Talking about birds!' said Parahandy with some diffidence. Uh, Doogie and me had a canary yonder. Oh, that's all off, said the Brodick man hurriedly, getting very red in the face, showing so much embarrassment indeed that the captain of the vital spark smelt a rat. Oh, what way off? he asked. It sticks in my mind that there was a kind of a wager, and that there's a pound note in the shipping box for the best canary. Did you, did you bring your canary? asked the Brodick man anxiously. "'Oh, it's doon there in the vessel, singing like to take the rivets out there,' said Parahandy. "'Oh, it's just sublime to listen to.' Uh, "'Well, uh, the, the fact is, uh, I'm not going to challenge,' said the Brodick man. "'I have a wife yonder, and she's sore against betting and wagering and gambling, and she'll not let me take my champion bird wee free over the door.' Oh, "'Just that,' said Parahandy. "'That's a pity. Well, well, the pound'll come in handy. "'I'll just go away down to the shipping box and lift it. Uh, "'Seeing a one, I'll stand you a drink.' "'The Brodick man maintained with warmth "'that as Parahandy had not yet lodged his stake of a pound, "'the match was off. "'An excited discussion followed, "'and the upshot was a compromise. "'The Brodick man, having failed to produce his bird, was to forfeit ten shillings and treat the crew of the vital spark. They were being treated, and the ten shillings were in Parahandy's possession when the Brodick sportsman rose to make some disconcerting remark. Ah, "'You think you're very smart, Macfarlane,' he said, addressing the captain. "'You are thinking you did a good stroke to get the ten shillings, but if you was smarter,' 
Ah, it is not the ten shillings you would have at all, but the pounds. Ah, had you fine, Macfarlane. My wife never said a word about the wager, but my bird is in the pook, and couldn't sing a note this week. That's the way I backed it. Parahandy displayed neither resentment nor surprise. He took a deep draught of beer out of a quart pot, and then smiled, with mingled tolerance and pity, on the brodic man. Ah, he said, and you think you have done a smart thing. You have much cause to be ashamed of yourself. You are nothing better than a common swindler, but ah, it doesn't matter. The fact is, we're birds did. Did? cried the brodick man. What do you mean by did? Just that it's no living, said Parahandy, coolly. Doogie and me bought one in the bird market, and Doogie was carrying it down to the vessel in a sugar poke, when he met some fellows he kent in Jamaica Street and went for a dram, or maybe two. After a while, he didn't mind what he had in the poke, and he put it in his trousers' pocket, thinking it was something extra for the Sunday's dinner. When he brought the poor wee bird out of his pocket in the morning, it was just a... Remains. <laughs>